This is Elegoo's newest FDM printer, the Neptune 3 Pro. And before I can film time lapses like this on it, I need to tune it. So I thought I'd take you through my process of tuning a new machine and pass on some tips and tricks so hopefully you can up your print quality. After assembling any machine, the first thing you should do is make sure you have proper tension on both the V-slot wheels and the X and Y belts. The wheels are adjusted with these concentric nuts and a good rule of thumb is that they should be tight enough to make solid contact with the aluminum frame but loose enough that you can spin each wheel with slight to medium friction while holding the axis in place. Once all the wheels are adjusted, move each axis by hand slowly, feeling for any binding or abnormal friction. For the belt, I like to use these tension knobs and snug them up until I feel resistance, then give it another half turn. If your printer is getting layer skips or noticeable ringing, try giving your belt tensioners another half turn. With new machines, I like to give the print bed a good scrub with soap and water. Soap is a degreaser and will remove any manufacturing oils or even oils from your fingers much better than isopropyl alcohol would. Always try to avoid touching your print bed with bare fingers as the oils left behind, even from clean hands, can have disastrous effects on your bed adhesion. Now just for a minute, I want to talk about the Neptune 3 Pro because the features are super cool. It has a direct drive extruder, auto mesh bed leveling, a nice magnetic touchscreen interface, removable PEI coated bed, dual Z axis lead screws, and this awesome integrated light bar. If you want to check this machine out, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, back to tuning. Next, we need to tune the extruder steps per millimeter. To do this, we simply need to extrude 100 millimeters of filament into the machine and measure how much is actually extruded. Measure and mark out 100 millimeters of filament, then heat up your extruder and tell the machine to extrude 100 millimeters. You can do this from the machine itself or connect over USB using a G-code sender program like Pronterface. After sending 100 millimeters of filament through the extruder, measure the actual amount extruded. Use this value to cross multiply and find your new steps per millimeter value. Set the new steps with this command and save it with M500. To ensure it's saved correctly, recall your printer settings using the M501 command. Now that that's taken care of, let's move on to PID tuning. This is going to help your printer heat up and maintain the desired hot end temperature accurately. For this, you'll need to be connected to your printer over USB and again use a G-code sending program like Pronterface. To start the PID auto tuning process, send the command M303E0S205C10. M303 is the G code command to start the PID auto tuning. E0 means we're selecting the first extruder since extruder counting starts at zero here. S205 is the desired temperature in degrees Celsius. And C10 is the amount of heat up and cool down cycles we're going to give the machine to find the perfect PID values. Once the command is sent, the auto tuning begins. Your machine will spit out values as it attempts to find the perfect ones. After it's done, it'll list what the perfect values for the given printing environment will be. Now we can compare them to the existing PID values by listing our printer's internal settings with the M501 command. This is my favorite part. The bigger the difference between the old and new values, the more of an impact it's going to make on your print quality. Set the new PID values using the M301 command like this. Remember, these are going to be different values for your machine. And that's it. Your 3D printer should be ready to print using any of the default profiles available in Cura or Prusa Slicer that match your machine's size and capabilities. For example, all the test printing I did with this machine was done using a default Ender 3 V2 profile in Prusa Slicer. I hope this helps simplify your tuning process and increases your printer's reliability and overall print quality. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you get things figured out. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.